All right, so this is my fully upgraded SU-16A model, and I thought I would post this to YouTube because I haven't seen many people who have upgraded it exactly like I have, and I thought I'd just make a fun video of it. So let me go over a few things about this that's different from the previous A models. First of all, this one has the aluminum front sight of the Bravo, which, as you can see, actually has uh, replaceable M16 type front posts. The original SU16A with the 18.5 inch barrel actually had a proprietary front sight that nobody really liked and you couldn't replace it with anything else so they listened to their customers and they replaced it with uh, with that one. So moving down I have a red line precision forend but I wanted to keep this light, so I only put two four-inch rails on it. One to hold the angled foregrip, and one to uh, have a light possibly mounted up there. And moving on down from that, I put on tech sights, which I have found to be very impressive. And uh, these are the SU-16A1 tech sights. Gives the rifle a really good look, and uh, honestly, if you're just planning on going out to about 300 yards with this thing and not planning on uh, putting it past any range past that, I would say that the original sights that came with the rifle are just fine. Uh, these tech sights are cool though, and I'll give you a look at what the uh, sight picture looks like with these babies. So that, in comparison to the other other sights, they look a lot more sturdy. The other ones are just kind of screw on. They look a little dinky. Um, and then, yeah, I did a Duracoat job on the whole thing and put the uh, angled foregrip on there. And I want to show next a little video of how it shoots because I was actually really surprised. The company's website says this rifle can produce sub minute of angle groups and I kind of thought that was BS because well that's a kind of a hard thing to achieve but when I free floated out this barrel with this red line precision rail it really did help its accuracy the original fore end was plastic and it was actually attached to the front here so if you put any weight on the fore end it would transfer to the barrel and that would cause your point of aim to be off from the point of impact so, uh, with this new rail system on here, I'll show you, I was able to shoot it out pretty far to about uh, 650 yards accurately. Now, I might not have hit the target every time, but I hit it a few times and that was without slinging into anything. So yeah. Oh, just one more little improvement. This guy from a hardware store works a lot better than the original pin that they threw in with uh, the SU-16. And you might see it and say, oh, doesn't that get in the way? Well, if you have a proper kind of higher grip or a lower grip, you're not going to have any problems with that. Not at all. Your fingers just go right around it here and it lays flat on the rifle on the side. So anyway, I recommend getting one of those pins. It's like three bucks. Well, so as you can see, I didn't have my rifle painted up so pretty in that video. Uh, but it did reach out and as long as I did my part it was keeping a pretty good group at those extreme ranges of 650 yards. Now my impressions of this rifle are that it would make a great light rifle carbine. It would not make a great battle rifle and by that I mean the difference between an M1 Garand and an M1 carbine. Whereas your AR-15s will probably be a little more tough when it comes to getting beat up because they're made out of aluminum and whatnot. Uh, this thing is not. It's made out of plastics and even though I have dropped it probably about three times now and not had a crack or any sorts of problems, uh, it's just not built to mil-spec standards when it comes to uh, putting a lot of damage into the rifle. So basically don't use it as something to top, chop down a tree with and you should be okay. Uh, like I said, these things have been a few, uh, through a few rough things with me and I've had no problem with them. 
So yeah, what, what are strong points? This rifle as it sits right now with the rail on and everything weighs about six and a half pounds as compared to an AR-15 which would probably weigh closer to 10. So if you um, are smaller statured or you just have a lot of gear on and really weighed down, uh, then this thing will come in handy. It will also come in handy as a, a nice little thing to patrol your property with if you live out in the sticks and you don't want to carry around a big old 10, 12 pound rifle to do it with, you can just carry around this guy. So anyway, it does have a lot of advantages, um, but it does have those drawbacks of not being mil spec. So just keep that in mind when you go go ahead and, uh, and purchase one if you're planning on doing that. Uh, it it is a great rifle for civilian applications, and and almost every civilian application I could think of a truck gun, a backpacking gun, uh, something to have on your property to defend yourself with. And uh, for an emergency bug out type rifle, this thing works in almost all categories. So I'm extremely impressed with Caltech's product. I must say that it didn't do very well with federal uh, vermit tips 50 grain. It had a lot of failures to eject, and that is 223 stuff, so it didn't have a lot of pressure, I guess, and it just didn't want to work in my rifle. But when it comes to the cheap ammunition, the Tula, the Wolf, um, other surplus stuff. This guy has no problems. So yeah, reliability is very good. Um, I only had problems with one sort of ammunition and as soon as I switched the problems went right away. Uh, so basically, yeah, if you have this, don't shoot Vermit 223 through it because it doesn't seem to have enough pressure to actually cycle uh, the firearm reliably. Other people may have had different experiences with that, that's just my experience. But anyway, awesome rifle. Uh, thank Keltec for producing it and producing something different than an AR-15 um, that I could still have in California. <laughs> Much appreciated, Keltec.